my expectation is that it has a very big influence on India and all of Asia and all the people who come. They go back home with lots of new ideas and uh, a strong commitment because when people come here, they are comforted by the fact that they discover so many things happening everywhere. Right. And so after they want to even work more, you know, and put up their sleeves. So yeah. that's what we need right. each, each year. No, no, no. Uh, talking about developing countries uh, with limited resources, how do you s see the debate of environmental uh, protection and sustainable development versus economic growth? In well, I, I don't see versus. I mean, uh, now most of the um, responsible um, politicians, economists, uh, and in the United Nations are talking about green growth. How can you merge uh, uh, the, the, the necessity of growing, especially in developing countries, with um, uh, the um, uh, ideals and necessities of sustainable development, which means attention to the social aspect and to the environmental aspect. And now everybody understands that human capital, social capital, and natural capital are as important as financial capital. So how can we find a, a, a new way of organizing our economics and, and galvanizing people to go in that direction? That was all the discussion. It was not only for each country, it was also for the global commons. I mean, oceans, the atmosphere, biodiversity, it's also the treasure of, of, of all of humankind. And the Rio Plus 20 has asked the international community to come with a set of sustainable development goals in 2015 for the whole of humankind. So it's also very ambitious. So everybody has to, I would say, to take, take uh, you know, take part in this effort um, uh, according, to, of course, to, to national capabilities and, and you know, different situations. But I mean, it's, it's a very important moment where the international community comes together. And it's also probably a new partnership for development which is also going to be organized. Right. I think also a mountain, people in the mountains. The mountains are, are remote places where lots of people are quite poor and mountains are hit also by climate change and are very important because they are the place where the water comes from. Right. So you're right, for the, the small islands, the, um, uh, there is a, quite a strong commitment. And I, I would say that um, islands, even though what you say is true, are leading. They are leading because they have to be autonomous. Right. They have to try to, to be um, independent in uh, creating their own sources of energy. They have to depend on the sea, so they are very committed to what they call the blue economy. And lots of, of, of these islands have committed to be zero carbon right. before big countries. Right. So, so um, uh, you know, they, they, they are also, they, they know how to make their voice heard uh, in international negotiations and they are taking the lead and there is a strong, I mean, there's lots of bonds between other countries and islands to help them uh, in renewables and to help them uh, to be resilient because lots of these islands are hit by hurricanes. Right. So, we, you know, we talk about New York, but don't forget Haiti. Eh? I mean. Uh, they, Lots of these islands, they lose about I don't know 40 percent of the GDP in one year. If right. Sudden, if they have a storm, sudden they will have again. Well, I, I think in the business community, you have those um, uh, which want to stay the business as usual without changing anything because they have the interests invested in oil, in mining and things like that. And you have all the others which are interested, which would be the winners of the new economy or the green economy and which want to move. So I think, you know, everybody must make an effort. And we have the reporting, now all the initiative on corporate responsibility. Are we going to have an international convention on, on reporting? It would be interesting for to be able to assess, to compare. Right. And we absolutely need to work with the, with the business and with the companies because I suppose I would say uh, three quarters of the job in the, on the world are with the business, on the private business, and all what's transforming nature comes from the companies. So we, we have to work with them, but I think, you know, it's a, it's a discussion also. Governments say, you business start. Business say, no, we need the governments to start and to show the regulations. So we need to get them together much, much more. And I was very interested in this meeting by the local governments, right. which are ahead. Yeah. And I think the, the combination of business and local governance, you know that cities, they have a huge procurement power, they have regulation power. This is also, I think, the way where things are going to start much stronger than at the national level or international level. Right.
Well, I'm uh, to tell you the truth, I was shocked mm -hmm. by the fact that I withdrew right. from the Kyoto Protocol. J Japan also, uh, New Zealand, I mean, lots of countries. Right. But Canada sh <laughs> showed the lead I mean, in, in, in getting away from it. Yeah. I think it's lots of ideology, to right. tell you the truth. Right. And it's also because um, uh, they had not uh, taken the steps necessary to reach the Kyoto Protocol um, uh, goals that, that they were fixed uh, and that, that what they accepted when they signed. So they didn't want to be penalized and so they, you know, they, they withdrew. Right. But uh, I think it's fairly shocking, you know. But I mean, that's, that's the way well, it is in international law. There's no international binding anything. You don't have international police, to, if you get out and uh, you're not doing what you said you would do, you don't have the police to come to put you in prison. That's right. International law, it's all, always voluntary. Right. So, so uh, I think, um, uh, you know, it's all about internal politics also. And the United Nations doesn't interfere right. in, in national politics and what happened in the States. So what I'm saying is purely personal. Yeah. But I think, um, you know, Alberta is in the power and they have a lot of tar sands and they right. want to sell, the, yeah. and sell that to everybody. Right. And so there we are. Yes, we have to invent something, but um, uh, Jeffrey Sachs, for instance, yesterday, he said it um, uh, didn't work with treaties. Treaties are very complicated, governments take a long time, uh, people are afraid of committing for long term because it's so uncertain. Mm -hmm. you don't, for instance, what will be the price of energy, we don't know. Everybody was completely surprised by, the, by suddenly all these, <coughs> these gas shale coming right. Nobody knew about that, you know, right. people think, thought that the, the, the price of, of oil would always go up and now suddenly it's sort of leveling and will perhaps, uh, because of this, all, all these shale which we find, shale gas and everything. So it's very difficult to commit in international treaties which are binding and right. people don't like it. And right. people do much more actually in their own country than right. they say, the diplomats say uh, at the diplomatic level. Right. So Jeffrey Sachs says, okay. But these sustainable development goals could be another way of doing things, together mm -hmm. engaging all of society and not only the governments. Right. So there's different ways of doing things. And, right. uh, it's true that um, bottom-up approaches now are very, you know, encouraging. You see lots of things happening. Right. But the top down is always very disappointing. Right. So we have to find a new way. I, you know, I, I believe one of our big problems is we have a, a, an international system mm -hmm. which is organized to, to treat the problems of governments and states between themselves. Mm -hmm. We don't have something for the planet. Right. We have to invent a new forum and a new diplomatic scene or something for the planet. We have common goods, some things have to be decided, and you're quite right. The situation is very scary, and, and we have to have a sort of an emergency movement. Yes. But is it going to happen? You can also ask your own country. I mean, you, you, are, you are saying things which your diplomats perhaps don't say. Okay? So you have to push them. Everybody, the people in each country, has to push the government and say, come on, you have to do something. Right.